want everybody to stand with me if you would. And, and uh, I want you to kind of bunch together. Find somebody next to you. Reach across. A, don't have to reach across an aisle, but find somebody there and take their hand that's next to you. I don't want anybody to be alone in there except for me. Grab the hand of somebody, and then I want you all to say this with me, okay? You ready? We are the body of Jesus Christ. We are the body of Jesus Christ. We walk by faith. We, walk by faith. we, live, in love. we live in love. We overcome together. We overcome together. Forever. Forever. Nothing can stop us. Nothing From attaining our eternal goal. From attaining our eternal goal. Not the circumstances of life. Not the fear of death. Not Not even our mistakes or failures. failures. We are the body of Christ. Christ. Dead to ourselves. ourselves. And alive in him. him. Now, Father, I pray that you would just anoint us with your Holy Spirit today. Speak to us. Make us alive as your body, Lord. Let your spirit refresh us and God move within us. And we give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm glad you've decided to join my family. (laughs) All right. Now, (laughs) now this huggy stuff, I don't know. (laughs) Being all in is is not an option with God. Let me show it to you this way, that if you ever, you know, the chapter in verse 316, chapter 3, verse 16, is very significant. Now, I realize, don't get all over me, because I know that these are man-made divisions that the Bible was given to us in, in verse and prose more than it was in divisions and sections. Men have come in and put those, those notes in there. But nonetheless, when you go through the Bible and you look at chapter 3 and verse 16, and we all know John 3.16, that's one that's obvious to most of us, for God so loved the world, say it with me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. Acts 3.16 says, and on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man whom you see and know, and the faith which comes through him has given him the perfect health in the presence of you all. The power of the Holy Spirit is here to heal. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? In 2 Corinthians 3.16, but whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. All things have become clear. In Ephesians 3.16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in the inner man. Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof for correction, for training in righteousness. James 3.16, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there's disorder in every evil thing. In 1 Peter 3.16, and keep a good conscience so that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame because you live in a good conscience. 1 John 3.16, we know love by this that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And Revelation 3.16, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of, my, out of my mouth. All of those verses are pretty powerful when you go through them and look. But listen, he's saying to us, it's time to be all in. He's not looking for those that would talk the faith and live a lie. He's looking for people that live the truth and walk it out through their whole lives. That they're all in with Jesus Christ. We began last week from John 15 talking about how he's the vine and we're the branches. And if we're disconnected from the vine, we just dry out and we become worthless for anything except to be cut off and thrown into the fire. But no, our life is in the vine. And that's where we started. Well, this morning, we're going to talk about being all in with each other in the body of Christ. Have you got 1 Corinthians 12? We're going to begin in verse 12, and look at it with me. 
For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I'm not a hand, I'm not a part of the body, it's not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the ear says, because I'm not an eye, I'm not a part of the body, it's not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members but one body, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it's much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members uh, uh, have no need of it. But God has so composed the body giving more abundant honor to the member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, various kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All, are not, all do not have gifts of healing, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the greater gifts and I show you a still more excellent way. He's teaching us here very clearly that the body of Christ is like the human body and that every single member is important to that body. When one hurts, we all hurt, okay? You can't do without the others and live as fruitful of a life. If you only had one foot, you'd be handicapped. Only one hand, you'd be handicapped. We need every part of our body working well in order for us to be fruitful in what God has made us to do. Now here's one way to look at it. Just picture, here's a beautiful sunny afternoon and there's two baseball teams that are going to go play each other at a local park. And uh, even though we expect a, a good game, one team is virtually assured of victory. The teams are dressed in their respective uniforms. There's the black socks that are wearing black. The white socks, of course, are wearing white. And game time is getting close, and the black socks are ready. Uh, all that team is all set, ready to play. They're not at all discouraged by the fact that the very best player that's ever played the game of baseball is on the opposing team, on the White Sox team. But the White Sox team is having some problems. Chris who's the greatest player to ever play the game of baseball, he was ready to play. But some of the players, they weren't moved by his enthusiasm. It, it, come to find out, the first baseman, as well as the third baseman, they were missing in action. They didn't show up. And the catcher, he finally showed up, but it was right before the game was about to start. All three outfielders were in attendance, but two of them hadn't bothered to practice for the last three weeks. Chris took the mound, but he had to pitch to an outfielder because the catcher didn't, didn't get there in time. And so the, the catcher just kind of swung into that position out in the outfield as the, as the outfielder sat behind the plate. Finally, the game started. The Black Sox showed that they came to play. Chris lived up to his billing. He covered first and third base as well as pitching. The outfield play was a disappointment. With, with the tardy catcher out there, and the two who hadn't bothered to practice, they were rusty and, and they didn't do very well at all in order to withstand the hits of the Black Sox. Chris was able to muster two outs on his own while the catcher turned outfielder and second baseman combined for the third out. It was going to be a long game. Now, the church is like that kind of a ball team. We have the very best player that has ever played the game of life on our team. 
His name is Christ, not Chris. But understand this. He absolutely is a winner. He's played this game longer. He knows it better than anybody else could ever play it. This game called life, Jesus Christ lived life to the full. The problem that he has is that his teammates don't necessarily share his enthusiasm. How many have found that out? There are sometimes, there are sometimes among us, surely not the guy in the mirror, but there are among us some people that just don't have that wholehearted, that wholehearted lust for life that Jesus had. There are, there are too many of us who don't have that same enthusiasm. In 1 Corinthians, Paul describes the church as the body of Christ. You better believe that our team is assured victory. There's no doubt about it. But to be victorious, we all have to play our part. To be victorious, we all have to give our best effort. And to be victorious, we all must be in the game. Now, I want to break this down a little bit in the time that we have left. In order for us to be victorious, each one of us has to take our part. For the body of Christ, he says, there in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 14, the body of Christ is not one member, but many. I mean, look around you. Go ahead, look around you. See those people to your left and right, behind you, in front of you? I mean, how many of them look just like you? Zero. Nobody looks just like you. Nobody. You are unique. No one brings to the table what you do. Nobody. Your talents, your hobbies, your experiences, your background, your travels, your education, your DNA, your fingerprints. Nobody is like you. You are unique. You are a unique you who plays a unique role in the body of Christ. Now, I got something I want to do today. It's a little bit different than this service isn't going to be quite like maybe some that we've done in the past. That's okay. But I've got some things that I want to give to some people here today, just really to illustrate the point. I'm going to get in trouble by doing this, because for every one of these that I give, there's about 100 more that I'm going to miss. But I, but I want to do this. I have something in my hand here. It looks kind of like this. Okay, this is a, it's a little, little gift thing, and it says on it, can you read what it says? You are an essential piece. That's what it says on it. Okay, and I want to, I want to give this to a couple people just to illustrate something. First, uh, I want Nancy Dixon. Where's Nancy? Is she in the back? Is she in the video room? Why don't you go get Nancy? I want Nancy to come out here. I saw her over here earlier, so I thought she was still here. And, uh, but we'll get to her in a minute. But I want you to understand a couple of things before she gets in here, because this is really important. Each part serves its God-given function. Romans 12, 3 and 8 puts it like that. The grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we, we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now, where's Nancy? Come here, Nancy. Come here. Now, Nancy is one of those people that is always faithful. Come up here. Come up here. She sits over here. She runs the videos. She works in the video room in the back. And, and she's kind of a behind-the-scenes kind of a person. But if you ever need a good neck rub, she's right there to give you one. And uh, she is one awesome sister in the Lord. She has a very unique and a very essential part in the body of Christ right here. And uh, what do you think about that? You think that's true? I guess so. <laughs> but she's one of my favorites, and I love Nancy because she has an overcoming spirit. You know, it doesn't matter. She hasn't had it the easiest. Some of her life has not always been the best, but she's always faithful. She's always in love with Jesus. She always tells everybody she knows about him. And for that, I'm proud of you, and I think you're one of the essential pieces 
here at Trinity. So I want you to have that. Thank you. Now, now, it's amazing how God uses different people for different things. In fact, here's one, here's one. Where's Don Cassing? Is Don here? Where's Don? Come here, come here, Don. In fact, bring your wife with you too. Bring Teresa up here too. Now, now you guys, you, how many have ever seen, if, if you ever try to picture in your mind what a church greeter would look like, <laughs> you would see, come on up here, come up here. You would see Don Cassing. That's who you'd see. Because Don, Don makes everybody feel welcome. He works really hard at remembering every name. He look, all the kids in the church know Don because he makes a big fuss over him. He remembers them from week to week. He has done just an absolutely wonderful job in a very, really short length of time here at Trinity when you compare some of us old guys around here. And, but just absolutely making people feel welcome in this church. And he could use, we could use some more just like him, but I gotta tell you, and as well, he, he's taken over our softball leagues. He loves doing that. He just loves doing anything he can to bless other people and to make them feel good about themselves. And so I want you to know, Don, that you are an essential piece in our church here. Now, now this one, you bet. Now, Teresa, don't mind if I stay. There you go. That's all right. Now, Teresa, she comes in, and, you know, we were talking about doing this coffee shop thing. Well, we come to find out, this takes a huge commitment. I mean, this means this is somebody who has to go shopping for all these different parts and everything and bring them in here and then be here like, oh, dark 30. She gets here as almost as early as I do on Sunday mornings just to make sure that she got everything tuned up and turned on and all that kind of stuff. And she takes the time to, again, you wouldn't think it took any effort because she never complains about anything. She's always smiling, always happy, always trying how to please. Somebody comes in and says, well, that's not what I wanted. Well, she'll just make you something else. She just absolutely is a gift from heaven to make people feel well about herself and... You're an essential piece. <laughs> now, and what you'll find, you know, I mentioned that in order for us to be successful as a body of Christ, we've got to give it our best effort. And I love being around people who give it their best effort because it absolutely, you know, I found this early when I got out of the service and I went to work at General Motors, and I'm sorry for those of you that work at General Motors, but I found a lot of guys that just aren't interested in giving it their best effort. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure none of you, you guys all give your best effort. But when I went to work, I found guys that would just rather sit around than, than get at it and, and, and do something that was productive and looking good. But here at Trinity, I found lots of folks who are willing not just to to do the minimum, but go over the top and do better than anybody before them. In Galatians 3, in Galatians 3, verse 26, it, it puts it like this. He says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free man, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, and if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Do you understand the high station you have in God through Jesus Christ? In order, if that's true, if you really understand your positional authority in God through Jesus Christ, then you better start acting like it. We better give it our best. Ruby, come here, come here. Ruby Martin, I gotta tell you, Ruby is one of those unsung heroes that always gives it her best. Now, She's one of my favorites because all the time she always is smiling, always upbeat, always happy. But she comes in and does incredible work in the music library. How many of you even knew we had a music library? And if you're not in the choir, you don't even know what that is. But she's in there running all these copies. She's doing all kinds of work just to make sure everybody else is set up. And she treats it 
as though this is the most important job in the whole world. And if she doesn't do her part, the ramifications are huge in our choir and orchestra and everywhere else. But she is an absolute gift from God, and she's an essential piece to this church. So I want you to have this. <laughs> I love you. But I, I love to see people who do what they do with excellence. And do it, do it because they're doing it for God. It's not like, I mean, how many, most people wouldn't even know that Ruby's here. She comes during the week. She hides away back in the back room. Nobody even knows she's there. This music just magically it's amazing and we have a lot of folks like that and I'm not going to be able to get them all today and like I said I'm going to be in big trouble by the end of this service because there are more I'll start doing more of this in the days ahead but in 1 Corinthians 12 22 verses 25b through 26 he says on the contrary it's much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. You know, God has given each one of us a part. But I love it when people do their work with sincerity and feel, feel for others. You know, if we're part of a body when somebody else is hurt, we hurt. You know, you, you don't just walk over them. They're part of you. It's just like in a marriage, it has to be that same way. When your wife is hurting, then you need to be hurting. If you're not, you soon will. No. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. But, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but it is important. I can't believe I do that to myself. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but God God has given each one of us a part now you saw it in that team illustration we've all been given our part to do and, and if everybody doesn't do that part it doesn't matter how good your star player is you're not going to make it I felt like last night the, the Alabama found a high school team to play <laughs> because some about those Wolverines they were just flat and they looked like minor league. It looked like they had these stars that were really good, ready to go, but they just didn't have it all together. And I'm praying that Brady's going to get them all together in the weeks ahead. But, you know, we've got to play as a team. You're only as good as the, the weakest person on your team, not the best. And we need to be, do our part. Each one of us has to do our part. What good is an outfielder if you don't have a first baseman? You know, without each member doing their part, the body of Christ suffers. The whole body suffers for everyone that isn't doing his part. Now, Renee Burley, I warned you, come up here. I want, I want to brag on her for just a minute. Now, Renee, Renee has more, you bet. Yeah. Now, Renee now, she has more of an upfront role. Some of you guys will recognize her because she just sang here, right? And she leads worship, and she does all these things. And for that, you know, I'm really impressed. And I, I know she does all this stuff with her girls, too, which, you know, I'm like, wow. You know, I never did that with our girl or our kids. We, you know. But she was just, re she's always, she's very talented, very gifted, very organized. She does lots and lots of things. But, you know, most of you don't know about all the other stuff in her life. She shared some of her story with us the other night, uh, Wednesday night. She shared some, some of that, and that was awesome, and I'm proud of her for being able to do that. But, but more than that, the stuff she does behind the scenes. She's out there quizzing all these MPAC girls so that they can get their honor star rating, you know, rushing back and forth, going nuts, while she's also the foster parent for, I don't know how many you have in there now, about five, for about five kids in her home, plus her own million kids that she has in there. And, and <laughs> she just is an amazing lady who cares. And wait, wait, wait. In the middle of all that stuff, She's asking me whether she can help somebody else. See, that's the way people are, like Renee. They, they are people who just flat care about the people around them. And it doesn't matter. And you can say, well, she's up there just doing her thing, singing. No, no, you, you have no idea what, who this girl is. She is an absolute gift from God to us, and she is an essential part of this ministry.
if, if we don't all do our part, then everybody suffers. We'll never be quite as good as we could have been. And, and that's the key here. To be victorious, finally, we've all got to be in the game. And this is a key part, obviously. Christians have to show up for practice. They've they got to be there. You know, it, it's not just about, about showing up for the game. You know, you have to practice what you're going to do when you get into the battle. Every army commander knows that. Every athletic coach knows that. It's how you practice is how you play. You're not going to be any good if you just try to go in there and do it right out of the chute without that kind of practice. You've got to work hard at it. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us, concentrate on doing your best for God. Work you won't be ashamed of. Laying out the truth plain and simple practice doing your best where's bill white bill white come up here buddy all the way in the back i know about these guys who sit in the back row i i I talk about you all the time bill but uh you know uh it's important that we practice and it's important that and we don't practice just uh for the game like Bill, of course, he plays the guitar. You see him up here playing the guitar. It's important that he practices the guitar. But there's a lot more to being a Christian than developing the gifts that you've been given. Now, he does that here. But you know what I'm most proud of about Bill is that he seeks God hard. He prays. He he loves Jesus with all of his heart, and he lets him know by spending time with him. And, And that, to me, is a lot more important than him playing the guitar, though I appreciate him playing the guitar. And, I'm, and he, he wants to do more. He's always like, he, Bill is the kind of guy, just like Renee, where, you know, if you want to get something done, they say, ask a busy person to do it. Bill is one of those guys. He referees like, I don't know, umpteen hundred sports and all this stuff on the side. And he, he's got a, a very demanding wife back there. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, I love you, kid. <laughs> but, but no, but he is a... <laughs> He and Kelly, Kelly's another one I could be doing this with, but, but not only does he spend time with our youth, he's going to be getting involved in fine arts this year and helping them practice for that. He's doing this up here with the orchestra and the choir. He wants to get more involved in leading worship. He's an elder. I mean, this is a guy who absolutely does a lot, and most of what he does is stuff that you'll never see, and the most important part is that he practices the presence of God. He's one that knows and loves Jesus Christ with all of his heart, and it shows to all of us who look at his life. So, Bill, you're an essential piece, brother. (laughs) Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, he says, let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. Now, I can't be thinking about worship without having Brian come up here. Brian Stockfish, you got to come up here, Brian. Now, <laughs> now, Brian is another one. I mean, not only does he get a little happy when he starts thinking about about worshiping God. And I mean, I think that's cool. I like that. I've uh, talked to Bill. We've talked for years that, you know, I want worship leaders who just love to worship. I mean, and and it shows. I mean, that's, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for, because how can you lead somebody else in something you don't do yourself? And so I, I, that's what I'm looking for. Well, Brian comes on the scene. It's like, whoa, dude, (laughs) he's been doing some uppers or something. (laughs) This guy, this guy, (laughs) it's that five hour energy you drink you know but but he is just fired up and he loves to worship but but you know more than that and a lot of people don't know brian is almost always here he gets here early he'll do backup keyboard he'll lead worship he'll do anything he can to help out in the ministry he was here yesterday playing a funeral for us brian's the kind of guy that would just flat do anything for you when life groups came up yeah oh man life groups always minister to me i need to be a part this is brian and, and, of course, Mary's right there with him, but this guy is amazing to me, and he is an essential piece of our ministry right here at Trinity. Yeah. You're the man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, 
I told you, I told you ahead of time I'm going to get in trouble because I know I'm not getting all of them. There's a million out here I could do. That. Well, not a million. I'm talking like an evangelist. There might be a few more dozen out here <laughs> that I could do this with. But it's important for us to understand how important it is to give our very best effort to be victorious in the game. We've got to give our best and we've got to be in the game. Christians have to show up for the game, secondly. In Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 18, it says this. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore... Take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, with all prayer and petition, Pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. It's important for us as Christians to show up at the game, to be a part, to be prepared, to be ready. And I got to tell you, there's somebody going to have to take a long walk, because I want you burly to come down here. And uh, while, while he's coming down here, I want Bonnie Taylor too. Bonnie, you come up here too. Where's Bonnie? Now, when you think about being prepared and being ready and coming and and spending time in the Word and preparation for what you're about to do, there's a couple of people here that I want to mention to you. One of them, of course, is Bonnie. Now, Bonnie is known to a lot of folks probably in the church, but many others may not know her that well. But Bonnie is one who really sincerely seeks God in His Word and prepares her heart for ministry. She not only does she, uh, she has a Bible study that she does with the ladies on a regular basis. She has a prayer time. She shows up. She has a Sunday school class. Bonnie is one who just gets involved wherever the need is and wherever there's an opportunity to share Jesus Christ with people, you'll find Bonnie there. She's sensitive to the Spirit. She listens to God. She shares with me many times the insights that God is giving to her. Just this morning, she told me that she feels that God is here to refresh There are some people here today that just need that word. There's a refreshing from the Holy Spirit that is here for you today. Receive it, receive it. And that's what she does for me. She always is blessing, always listening, and just a gift from God and an essential piece of this ministry. Love you. (laughs) Bless you. Now, this guy, I can't commit. This is... This is the amazing soldier here. I, I, most people, I mean, you know, sound guys, they get the blame for everything and the credit for nothing. But Burley, I got to tell you, Burley Cavanagh is one of the most incredible people I've ever known in the ministry. He's here before anybody else ever gets here on Sunday except me. Everybody else. He's here every single Wednesday. He's here every time the doors are open, every funeral, every wedding. Burley is, do, he's not getting paid to do this stuff. Burley comes here just to bless, just to bless and just to serve God on those soundboards. I'm telling you, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but he's a gift from heaven. I tell you, when you got to count on somebody, you got to count on this guy because he's going to show. He's the one that will do it. And you bless me and you are an essential piece of this ministry. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And, of course, the most important thing is to be on the team. If you've not joined the team of Jesus Christ, if you have not understood what it means to truly love him, in Romans 6, 1 through 10, the picture is painted. So what do we do? You know, Christ died for us. And where, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound, Paul says. But then he, he goes on to say in the first verse of chapter 6, Well, then what do we do? Do we keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If you've left the country where your sin is sovereign, how can we still live in that old house there? 
Or don't you realize that we packed up and left there for good? That's what's happening in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into the country of grace. A new life, a new land. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we're lowered into the water, it's like the burial of Jesus. When we're raised out of the water, it's like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light filled world by our father so that we can see where we're going in our new grace sovereign country that's obviously from the paraphrase but what is he saying he's saying to us that life real life begins when you come into Jesus Christ when you become one with God through Jesus Christ you enter into a brand new life a light filled life one where you can see where you're going and you can't find it apart from him that's the starting point. That's why every Sunday I give people an opportunity to come to faith because I know from personal experience that your life will be changed, that when you were out there groping in the darkness before without a clue what this life was all about or where you were going, all of a sudden that can be changed because God's light will shine through you and light your path. So trust him today. If you, In fact, let's just pray for just a moment, and I'll conclude in a second. I do want to pray for these, the new classes, the new teachers, and I want you to join me with it. I'm running a little late, but we had a few extra things here today. But bow your heads with me right this moment. Father, we come in Jesus' name into your presence, and we ask you, please, search our hearts. Lord, if there's something in me that's separating me from God, Lord, I pray that in this moment, I wouldn't just recognize it. I wouldn't just be embarrassed because of it. Though I should feel the hurt that you feel by my sin, Lord, I should just feel it so that I can turn from it. And in this moment, Lord, where I realize that I've been living for myself and I haven't been living for you, I come humbly. I ask you to cleanse my heart, my mind. Forgive me. God, I'm sorry. I was going the wrong way. I know it. I knew it then, but I did. And in this moment, Lord, I cry out, forgive me. Cleanse me. I need a Savior. I need your help, your life in me. I want to live in you, Lord. I want to find out what my life was really made to be. And I know now that I can't find it apart from you. So come, fill my life with hope again. Fill me with your grace, your forgiveness. If that's you today and with your heads bowed and eyes closed and you'd say, I need him in my life and I know it. When, even when you were praying, Pastor, I knew that was my prayer. I need him in my heart. My life has been going the wrong way for too long. I'm tired of running. This is my moment. I know that Jesus has a plan for me. Well, the good news is that he's only a prayer away. If you will believe what we just said, if you will believe that in your heart and you will confess it with your mouth, then you will be saved. The Bible says that you can walk out of this place knowing that you're in right standing with God. The Spirit of God himself bears witness with your spirit that you are a son of God. You can know that today. You don't have to walk around wondering. But in this moment, right now, will you run to him? Will you run to him? He's knocking on the door of your heart. And if that's you, with your heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm not going to embarrass anybody, but if that's you, and you really mean it, and you'd say, Pastor, pray for me. I need him in my life, and I know it then I'm going to ask you to do this one simple thing in just a moment. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. That's all. And by raising your hand, you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I need him in my life. Are you ready right now with your heads bowed and eyes closed for that one that's saying, that's for me, Pastor. I know I need him in my life. Just lift your hand up real high so I can include you in this prayer. Sure. That's me. Pray for me, Pastor. I need him. I need him in my life. Sure, back here to my left. Just lift it up high to him. If you lifted your hand, just keep it up. And let's all pray this prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, you know my heart. You know me better than anyone. And I come to you today guilty of sin. And I ask you to cleanse me. Make my heart new. Be my Savior. And I commit to you that I will follow you 
for the rest of my life. I love you, Jesus. And I receive you as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. That's the best.